All right, Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Let me just share this real quick, and then we're going to get started. Hallelujah. Hope everybody had a good week. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Gonna attack everybody in the group and then we're gonna start. Hallelujah. Couple seconds to tag everybody and be starting. Hallelujah. Just got one more tag to do and we ready. Hallelujah. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Okay. Right. All right. So, All right, we're ready to go. Hallelujah. Yeah, let me share my screen. Share my screen. All right. All right, can y'all see my screen? Can y'all see the slides? Yes. Okay. Yes. So uh, thank y'all. All right, so tonight we're going to be talking, the title is We Must Bear Fruit. So we're going to talk about that. Um, but before we do that, um, I hope everybody had a great week. Thank you all for um, joining us again on Foundation of Friday. I'm hoping that tonight um, the Most High will give us what we need for our spirit, for our soul, so that we can practically apply it to our lives as we learn together and grow together. So tonight, if you hear these words, Adonai, we're referring to Lord Mashiach, we're referring to Christ. Rock Hakadesh, we are referring to the Holy Spirit, Yahuwah's name. Yahuwah is God's name. Okay. Okay. Um, Yahushua is Jesus' real name. A couple minutes, and Yahushua a couple minutes. is Jesus Christ, right? Um, all previous teachings um, can found on YouTube. We have our uh, Foundational Friday group. Um, the teachings are there. And we also have the Foundational Friday Facebook page where all of them are under the name of Foundational Friday. So you can find all previous teachings there in our lives and our, um, also on our Facebook page. So we are going to get into prayer real quick and then we will hop into the 
less than Yah, we come to your name of Yahushua, Father. Thank you for this Shabbat, Father. We thank you for allowing us to gather another week, Father. We thank you for your mercy, your grace, Father. We thank you for protecting us throughout this week, Father. We thank you for your Shabbat, Father. We just thank you for being who you are in our lives, Father. We invite you in, Father, to come to well with us, Father. You said wherever two or three are gathered in the midst, gathered together in your name, you will be there in the midst, Father. So we invite you in, Father. We ask you to allow us to gain revelation, Father. We ask you to give us a fresh feeling of your spirit on tonight, Father. We ask you to let your word come alive in us, Father. We ask you to just be with us, Father. We ask you to teach us on tonight, Father. We ask you to give us practical application, Father. Yah, we thank you on this night. We thank you for being who you are, Father. We ask you just to lift Anything that will cause us to not be engaged in the Sabbath, Father, let us enter into the rest on tonight. Destroy, Father, the yoke of worrying, Father. Destroy fear, Father. Destroy any anxieties, Father. Let us enter into your rest on tonight, Father. Let us lay down any burden, any weight, Father, that will cause our minds not to be focused on you, that will cause our minds not to rest, Father. We thank you. We enter into your rest, Father. Help us now, Father. Father, we come against anything that will distract us on tonight, Father. Anything that will cause us not to be engaged with you, Father. Open our ears, Father, so that we can hear you clearly, Father. Open our eyes so that we may see, Father. We thank you, Father. Release your power now, Father. We thank you. We thank you. And then in Yahushua HaMashiach, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all can see the screen, right? I need to make sure. Yes. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> so tonight, tonight we were supposed to be doing um a Bible uh misconceptions in the series, because every other week. Was going to do a Bible mix misconceptions and then the regular teachers and the Bible misconceptions. But this week, y'all told me to do something else. So I had to be obedient. But next week, we'll get back to Bible misconceptions, right? So tonight, we are going to discuss bearing fruit. And this is what y'all gave me, right? So I'm going to read from the top. In our walk with y'all, it is imperative that we grow and yield the results that Torah is supposed to produce in our lives. It is imperative, right? It is imperative that we grow and yield the results of Torah, that Torah is supposed to produce in our lives. Torah manifested in our lives is the epitome of bearing fruit, and it is directly connected to us actively operating in and fulfilling Yah's will and purpose for our lives. Bearing fruit is directly, is directly, right, connected to us, actively operating in and fulfilling Yah's will and purpose for our lives. If we honestly examine ourselves using Torah as a standard, we can quickly assess if we're bearing fruit in certain areas of our lives and improve in the areas that we need to bear more fruit in. Let's, let's take, um, let's examine the importance of bearing fruit and what this entails. So we must bear fruit. It is important for us to bear fruit, right? That is what we're supposed to do. Right, and that is directly connected to our purpose that Yahuwah has created us for. Right, so the Webster Dictionary gave the common de definition of fruit, which is the usual edible reproductive body of a seed plant, which is just fruit. Right, the Strong's 2950 Carpus fruit is a fruit, generally a uh, vegetable, sometimes animal. Uh, fruit 
the action or result is what we, we're really discussing tonight. And C is profit and gain, right? So we are going to hop right into the scripts so we can see what Yahuwah is saying to us. All right. Um, can y'all see my Bible gateway? Yes. All right. Hallelujah. All right. So we're going to start John 15, 1 through 21. And I'm going to read on the left-hand side of the screen. I'm going to probably jump back and forth between complete Jewish and King James, like we always do. If y'all got any scriptures, any comments, um, y'all can bring those out. Um, use the raise your hand button for the comments. And any questions, we'll, we'll grab those on the back end because we got a space for questions. And I also will be giving space for comments in between while we're going through, right? All right. So John 15, 1 through 21, the complete Jewish Bible on the right-hand side, it says, I am the real vine and my father is the gardener. Every branch which is apart from me, but fails, which is part of me, which is part of me, but fails to bear fruit, he cuts off. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it may bear more fruit. So Yahuwah's desire for us is to bear more fruit. And sometimes the process of pruning, well, most times, probably all the time, the process of pruning is completely uncomfortable. Many times the process of pruning involves processes and things that Yah has designed for us to go through that we probably would not choose ourselves, most likely, right? Pruning really deals with us having our flesh decrease, right? Our flesh killed or dying, right? So that the spirit can be more manifested through us, right? So the pruning process is always, it's almost always uncomfortable. It almost, it's always, almost, almost always seemingly unfavorable. Right, but it is necessary for our growth. So we have to understand that Yahuwah will prune us. Just when we think we got it all together, he comes with some more pruning to let us know we still have to press towards the mark. That we still have to seek to have those crooked places made straight. So this is what the pruning process does for us. Right. And he said, every branch is part of me, but fails to bear fruit. He cuts off. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it can bear more fruit. That is the objective for our walk. We must bear fruit at all costs. The most important thing in our walk is that we should bear fruit. Because if we do not bear fruit, we're cut off. Everybody connected to the Most High should bear fruit. And bear fruit is directly connected to our purpose. So we need to know what it is that we are here for and identify that so we can be actively operating in our calling and purpose, bearing fruit. It is extremely important that we bear fruit. I'm the real vine, and my father is a gardener. Every branch which is part of me, but fails to bear fruit, he cuts off. And every branch that does not bear fruit that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it may bear, bear more fruit. Verse three, right now, because of the word which I have spoken to you, you are pruned. Right? So we have to receive 
what Yahuwah speaks to us and not only receive it, but obey. This is the evidence that our heart is being pruned and that we are yielding results and fruit. Right now, because the word which I've spoken to, you are pruned. Stay united with me as I will with you. For just as a branch can't pour, put forth fruit by itself, by itself apart from the vine, so you can't bear fruit apart from me. Right? So we need to stay connected to the Most High. We need him to bear the fruit of the spirit. He empowers us. He enables us. He gives us the capacity and the ability to bear fruit so that he can get the glory out of our lives. Any thoughts before we move? But one has to identify and know exactly what their purpose is or what the purpose that the Most High have created you to do. We know that the, main, the general purpose, the whole duty of man is to keep commandments. But within that, each one of us has gifts. We have assignments, people he assigned us to, things we're supposed to do for him, right? And we need to be able to identify that and then do it effectively by his spirit, right? If we do not identify or have not identified it, we need to find out because he is calling us to bear more fruit. In order to bear fruit, we must identify exactly what it is we are supposed to be doing that he ordained and called us to do. And we have to get busy and become effective in doing what it is that he ordained us to do. Some of us may operate in the spirit of fear and fear will cause you not to move forward in what Yahuwah has called you to do. We have to overcome fear and believe that he is empower us to do what he called us to do. Watch. Over here. In Second Peter, um, Second Peter, chapter one, verse one through thirteen, right? It says, "From Simon Kepha, right? Simon Peter, a slave and a, an emissary of Yahushua the Messiah, to those who, through the righteousness of our Elohim and our Deliverer, Yahushua Messiah." have been given the same kind of trust or faith as ours. May grace and shalom be yours in the full measure as you come to a full knowledge of Yahuwah and Yahushua or Adonai, right? Here, verse three. Yahuwah's power has given us everything we need for a life of godliness. Do y'all see this? Yahuwah's power has given you everything you need for a life of godliness. It has given you everything you need to carry out what he has called you to do in the earth and to bear fruit. He has already given you everything you need. What we have to do is not allow the enemy to steal our courage and we need to boldly walk in what he has called us to do. Yahuwah's power has given us everything we need for a life of godliness through our knowing the one who called us to his own glory and goodness. Any thoughts before I move? All right. So, Yahuwah's power has given us everything we need for a life of Godliness. He has given us everything we need to carry out the purpose that he has called us to do in this life, which in turn should be the evidence or an example of us bearing fruit. 
right? By these, he has given us valuable and superlative great promises so that through them you might come to share in Yahuwah's nature and escape the corruption which evil desires have brought into the world. For this very reason, try your hardest to furnish faith with goodness, goodness with knowledge, knowledge with self-control, and self-control with perseverance. Perseverance with godliness and godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly, brotherly affection with love. For if you have these qualities in abundance, they keep you from being barren and unfruitful in the knowledge of our Adonai Yahushua Messiah. So these qualities, we need them in abundance so that we not, we cannot, or we will not be unfruitful. These are some of the same qualities that we need when it talks about the fruit of the spirit. It says we must have these, if we have these in abundance, it will keep us from being unfruitful, being barren and unfruitful. Right? He's called us to bear more fruit. So these qualities here that he just said, godliness with brother affection and brother affection with love, um, knowledge with self-control, self-control with perseverance. So we need to furnish our faith with these things, right? And if we have these in abundance, we will not be, uh, it will keep us from being barren and unfruitful. Any thoughts? Any comments? All right. Verse 9, and he who lacks them is so blind, short-sighted, that he forgets that his past sins have been washed away. Therefore, brothers, try even harder to make your being and chosen a certainty, right? And the king on the King James side, it says, Where wherefore rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you should never fail. Right. So I was just saying that a minute ago that we have to be sure about what he's called us to do. We have to know it for certain. And we have to execute it effectively by his spirit because he has already empowered us and given us what we need to carry out what he called us to do and carry it out effectively. Because we have to remember when we're bearing fruit, when we're operating our calling and our purpose, it's not our power that does it. It's not our power, right, that allows manifesting to take place. It's not our power that destroys the yokes. It's the power of the Most High who he has given us in the Ruach, right, that he already has given us everything that we need to carry out what he called us to do. I'm also like two things that can stop us. Fear and rebellion. And if we allow fear to overtake us, it will put us in a state of rebellion because it would keep us from carrying out what he called us to do. Any thoughts? Thoughts, comments? All right. So verse 9 says, Indeed, whoever lacks them is blind, so short-sighted that he forgets his past sins have been washed away. Therefore, brothers, verse 10, we just read, try even harder to make your being and call and chosen a certainty. For if you keep doing this, you will never stumble. Y'all see this? If we keep making our calling and election sure, if we keep on being, having these qualities that we just read above in abundance, we will bear fruit and we will never stumble. That's a powerful, state, powerful statement, but in order to truly walk in that, 
in order to truly, in order to truly believe that, we have to walk in faith. We have to truly believe it with everything in us. And we have to know that it's the power of the most high and not us. So we can completely put our dependency on him and not in our own ability. Sometimes we get to doing stuff in our own ability and it don't work out right. Any thoughts before we move? Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. So I was just thinking as you were speaking and as we were reading um, this passage of scripture here and um, Second mm -hmm. Peter, how um, going back when um, he was walking on the water, uh -huh. as long as he kept his eyes on Yahshua, yep. he did not fall. Did not, and that could be also related to us on today. You know, as long as we keep our eyes on Him, mm -hmm. and like you had said about the Ruach, as long as we know that we don't do this in our strength, but it's in is and by His strength that He has given us, mm -hmm. we can't we can't fail. Right. But anytime when you take it upon yourself and you you say, "Oh, I got this," mm -hmm. watch out. Shipwreck, right. you about to you about to go down. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's all I want to say at this time. It's true. So as soon as we do that, we we find ourselves in situations, yelling and howling and crying for him to get us out. But we we have to get into the habit of seeking him and checking with him to find out uh, the things that we should or should not do, or how to go about carrying something out. But sometimes we, you know, we think we know we got it all figured out, and then sometimes it can go wrong. Right? But it said if we keep doing these things, we will never stumble. And verse 11 says, thus, thus you will be generously supplied with everything you need to enter the eternal kingdom of our Adonai and deliverer of Yahushua Messiah. And verse 12 says, for this reason, I will always remind you about the things, these things, even though you know them and are firmly established in the truth, you already have. So anything that we know already, we will be reminded of it again and again and again so that it can stay in our spirit. Right, the Bible only Genesis from Genesis to Revelation. There's no more, that's it. So a lot of these things we're going to hear them again and again and again. It may be some more revelation to them. It may be a different way of explaining them. But these same things from Genesis to Revelation we're going to hear again and again and again. And verse twelve states that it said, "For this reason, I will always remind you about the things, these things, even though you know them, and are firmly established in them." or you are firmly establishing the truth you already have. Verse 13, and consider it right to keep stirring you up with reminders as long as I am in the tent of this body. Hallelujah. So right now at this point, we should understand that Yahuwah has already given us everything that we need to bear fruit, to carry out our purpose, to do what he called us to do. Only thing we have to do is step out on faith like you just mentioned about when he called them out on the water, we have to step out on faith and do what he has already empowered us to do. Say what he has already given you to say. Right? So in these ways, we will bear fruit like he has called us to or he called us to do. All right, um, we are back on John 15, 1 through 21. We are on verse 5 now. It says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who stay united with me and I with them are the ones who bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can't do a thing, right? 
unless a person remains united with me, he is thrown away like a branch and dries up. Such branches are gathered and thrown into the fire where they are burned up. This is what happens to branches that don't bear fruit. So when we are, when his, his thought process about us of bearing fruit is something that we absolutely must do. Right? It's part of our faith walk. It's part of our responsibility. It's part of holiness. It's part of our, our renewed mind. It's part of our renewed character. In order to do so effectively, you have to, we have to maintain our relationship. We have to stay united with the Most High. Right, and we do that through faith. Any time that we are operating in fear, for that period of time, we are disconnected from the Most High until we learn or until we overcome that fear. Because He, not He, didn't give us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and the sound mind. Right. So we have to. I keep mentioning fear because that is the thing that will keep somebody from doing what the Most High has called them to do and bearing fruit. Because you worry about everything. Oh, I don't know if I, I'm going to get it right. I don't know. I heard it, but I don't know if I should say it. How are they going to respond? And all we got to do is carry out what he said. It's not our job to worry about all the details all the time. Oh, if I say this, they're going to look at me crazy. I know I heard your whole, your whole voice and they told me to do this or say that, but I don't know. I need another confirmation. And the, mm -mm. We need to be obedient so that we can bear more fruit. He already empowered us already. Any, any, those kind of things are really like an undertone of fear that causes disobedience. And we cannot bear fruit in operating in disobedience at the same time. It's counterproductive. It don't work. There's no growth there. There's not progression in that. There's regression. Any thoughts before we move? All right. It says such branches are, are, are gathered up and thrown in the fire where they are burned up. Right? Verse 7 says, if you remain united with me and my words with you, then ask whatever you want and it will happen for you. This is how my father is glorified in your bearing much fruit. Right? This is how you will prove to be my disciple. Do y'all hear this? The way we prove to be his disciple is by bearing fruit. Bearing fruit has to do also has to, has to do with doing, effectively doing what he has called you to do, whatever your purpose is uh, individually in this earth. The thing that he has given you to do to edify his people, this is what you must do effectively or what we must do effectively so that we can bear fruit. So that the most high can be glorified even the more. Any thoughts? All right. Verse 8 says, this is how my father is glorified in your bearing much fruit. This is how you will prove to be my disciple. My disciples. Verse 9 says, just as my father has loved me, I too have loved you. So stay with my love. If you keep my commandments, you will stay in my love just as I have kept my father's commandments. And stay in his love. I have said, verse 11, this to you so that you may, um, that my joy may be in you and your joy be complete. Right? This is, this is my command that you keep on loving each other just as I have loved you. No one has a greater love than a person who lays down his life for his friend. You are my friends if you do what I command you. Right? Do y'all hear this? Like, 
we have to find in our, ourselves in the position and cultivate the capacity to always be positioned to do what the Most High has called us to do or what he's commanded us to do. Right? We can never allow the enemy to steal or take our courage. He tells us to operate, the Most High tells us to operate boldly. You can't operate, we cannot operate boldly if we are having undertones of fear and doubt in the things that he called us to do. We can't bear fruit like that because it requires obedience to what he has called you to, to bear fruit. There are some things that he has assigned for you to do that is just for you to do. Not your cousin, not your aunt, not your sister, brother. He is called and designed and purposed that you carry out whatever his will is that he ordained for your life. And that is how you will bear fruit. Any thoughts? Some of us has been, you know, gathering for a long time, hearing good words for a long time, but we have to position ourselves in a place or in a position that we are bearing more fruit than what we were bearing before. We should continue to grow, right? We should continue to progress on our walk day after day, month after month, year after year. It should be some growth happening so that we can bear more fruit. If pruning is not taking place, then somewhere in us, we are not doing what he's called us to do. Or we may be rebelling in some area. And rebelling is just simply not doing it. Mm -hmm. Verse 15. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is about. But I have called you friends because everything I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me. I chose you and I've commissioned you to go and bear fruit. Do y'all hear this? There no, there's no way out of this. There's no, there's no, 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 uh, no other options about this. I mean, the other option is don't bear fruit. And then he going to gather the branches up and toss them in the fire. But that's it. He said, you did not choose me. I chose you. And I've commissioned you to go and bear fruit. Any thoughts about that? This is what he has ordained for our lives. Right to bear fruit. And as I said, we cannot allow fear to take us out of what we are being called to do. He said, I've chose you. And I've commissioned you to go and bear fruit that will last. So whatever you ask from the Father in my name, he may give you. This is what I command you. Keep loving each other. Mm -hmm. We can't worry about <laughs> all the details all the time. Sometimes he give you instructions step by step. He only give you the whole plan. He'll tell you the perfect step B, step A, and then step B, and, and on the way, step by step, on the way down. But sometimes we try to worry about how the whole thing is going to come together. But that's not our job. Our job is to obey what he told us to do right now. That's it. Hear and obey what he said do right now. Now, not, not try to figure out every detail because that'll knock you right off the path. Mm 
right? And some of us, some of us may be so focused on things that happened before. What happened in the past? You might not feel like you're uh, worthy enough to do what he's calling you to do, right? But you have to get, and we have to get in our minds that we have been transformed by the renewal of our minds, right? We have to get in our minds that any band being Mashiach is a new creature and old things pass away. You can't worry about which, what happened, where you messed up at yesterday and the day before, because that time is gone. Right? And he said, I'll cause all things to work together for the good of those that love Yahuwah and are called according to his purpose. Right? So if, if we love him and we're keeping his commandments and we're called according to his purpose, no matter what it looks like, he will cause all things to work together for the good of us who love him and are called according to his purpose. And in that way, he will cause us through the pruning process to bear much fruit. Any thoughts? All right, this verse 18 is, is something that some people really worry about. But Yahushua said, if the world hates you, understand that it hated me first. You can't be asphyxiated on people liking you. Because when you think about that, that will make room for fear to come in and tell you, don't say that. Don't do that. Don't, don't say that. Don't do it. Even though Yahuwah told you to say it and do it. You were about somebody not going to like you. Part, part, this part of the package. If the world hates you, understand that it hated me first. This is part of the package. Some people don't have their gifts operating at full capacity because they're afraid that people won't like them. But you have to overcome fear. Because they already probably don't like you anyway. So, right? If the world hates you, understand that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, the world would have loved its own. But because you do not belong to the world, on the contrary, I have picked you out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. Remember that I told you a slave is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you too. Y'all hear this? So you can expect fathers to be ruffled when you begin to bear fruit, right? By doing what the Most High has called you to do, you can expect that there will be some feathers ruffled. You're going to be talked about this light and everything else. But Yahuwah has commanded us to bear fruit regardless. He didn't put no clause in there with a stipulation that said, if they don't like you, he said, if, if they hated you, they hated me too. Welcome to the club. This is part of the walk. Go ahead, Okima. I see your hand. <laughs> you know, as you keep talking about this fear, mm -hmm. my mind is going back to, I believe it was Gideon's army. Mm -hmm. How he started out with all of these people. And mm -hmm. he started giving them a task to do. Mm -hmm. And the task that he continued to give to these individuals, his army dwindled down. Right. And it's the same as we are in the world, but we're not of the world. Right. And, you know, there's a song they, they, they sing in, in the church. I'm a soldier in the army of Yahweh. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, and you know, they be singing a song, you know, but as soon as something happened, they ready to run from their post. Mm -hmm. 
you know, so you really got to be focused and really got to know what you're singing these days, you know, because you're going to be tested. It's true. You're going to be tested. And it's, it's going to tell you if you're in the way or if you're not. That's true. And, you know, so fear can't be nowhere around. Right. And we know that fear is not of him. Mm hmm he said he has not given us a spirit of fear, but right. of love. Yep. And so yep. we just got to get that under control. Even, you know, all the examples that we have, you know, we talk about these examples all the time. You mm -hmm. know, the examples that we have, we have to, and the scriptures tell us, we got to arm ourselves likewise. That's like they, they persecuted those that was before us. Mm-hmm. So how we feel is though we're different. Right. Are we just supposed to be again one of these songs go sweeping through the city? Right. Ain't nobody supposed to touch us. We mm -hmm. just supposed to just go on through, and it's just gonna be a bed of roses. Right. It's not so. You know, we gotta in order in order to obtain eternal life, mm -hmm. in order to yeah. reign with Yahshua forever. Mm -hmm. Suffering is in order. Persecution is in order. Yep. People not like you like is in order. <laughs> you know, you just got to know that, again, we're just pilgrims passing through that. This is not our land. This mm -hmm. is not our home. This is not where we're going to get our eternal reward. Right. And he said, if you suffer with me, you're going to reign with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody else for me? All right. Oh, Sister B, hope good. Hop good. Go ahead. I see you. Yeah, Sister Bev. I'm Big Bev, but I put my married name on there. So All right. So <laughs> <laughs> Sister Big Bev, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, but I wanted to share too because I was thinking about how with the pruning, and I and I did appreciate how you emphasized that in Yahshua because you can try your best to mm -hmm. produce your own fruit, but outside of the vine, you are not going to survive. So it right. may give the appearance of fruitfulness, but it won't last. But mm -hmm. only in him will the fruit last. And pruning, I think about how when you want to grow your hair, you have to clip the ends for it to grow collect correctly. You have to till the ground mm -hmm. for the seed that requires a turning. You know what I mean? Everything requires a work. So it's like, I think about that's why the preaching of like, oh, you're not, you don't have enough faith. Oh, you don't have, you ain't playing a bigger seed is so incorrect because troubles are going to come because they, they always come to help you grow and mature in him so that way you can be perfect because perfect is maturity so you're going to keep growing as he perfects us day in and day out and every situation is a situation for growth because we have that edge when you're right. in him so it's not like you know the devil is running in and out your life that's that's a misconception but it's like know that it's him producing these things allowing these things to come so that way we can grow and grow in him. So I, I really like that. I really appreciate it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yep. That's what he's calling us to do. And that 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 pruning process is definitely um it's part of the package. And there's there's no way around it if we um desire to uh grow in him. It's it's part of the deal. It is part of the deal. So anybody else before we move? All right. Verse 20 says, remember, I told you a slave is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you too. If they kept my word, they will keep yours too. Verse 21, but they will do all this to you on my account because they don't know the one who sent me. Hallelujah. All right. Matthew 7, 15 through 20. Um, let me see. All right. Yeah, Matthew 7, 15 through 20. 
Beware of false prophets. They come to you wearing sheep's clothing, but underneath they are hungry wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Fruit is an identifying factor. Right? We just stated a minute ago that um, I think Sister Big Bev said that you can't do nothing apart from the Messiah or O King. One of y'all said it. Y'all just said it because we just talked about it. Right? The only thing that <laughs> Only good fruit can be, we can bear good fruit when we're in union with the Most High. Outside of that, the fruit is bad. Sister Beth said it. She said that it appears like people who are not um, connected to Yahuwah appear to have good fruit, but it's really not. It's, it's deceptive. Is deceptive, it's an appearance. And we cannot get caught or deceived by the appearance of others bearing fruit, knowing that these individuals are not connected or in the will of Yahuwah. Or you might get this, well, you know, seems like everything going good for these individuals and they're not obeying Yahuwah whatsoever. But it is a deception. The fruit won't last. Beware of the false prophets of 15. They come wearing, come to you wearing sheep clothes, but underneath they are hungry wolves. You will re recognize them by their fruit. Can people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Like every healthy tree produces good fruit. But a poor tree produces bad fruit. 18. A healthy tree cannot produce, cannot uh, bear bad fruit, or a poor tree, good fruit. Any tree that does not produce good fruit is cut down and thrown in the fire. So you will recognize them by their fruit. Do y'all hear this? So a person who refuses to be connected to the Most High, they can bear fruit, but it's bad fruit. It's not fruit that's going to last. We just read it. And that tree will be cut down and thrown in the fire. So it tells us that it's easily identifiable, right? Because we will recognize them by their fruit. If we are walking in the light, we're of the most high. We can recognize good fruit, bad fruit. It's apparent. It's apparent because he said this says we, we will be able to recognize it. So if we have the spirit of the most high, we can recognize the bearing of good fruit or the bearing of bad fruit. And we should be able to recognize it in our own lives as well through self-examination. We know when we off key and we off track and we, when we need to tighten up and get back on the path. We know. A lot of times people ain't got to tell us, we know. So not only should we be able to recognize others by their fruit, we should be able to recognize our own selves when we are off key or out of step or off the path. Because a lot of times it is easy to identify somebody else's bad fruit, but sometimes it's hard to stare in that mirror and identify our own. Because we sometimes we can't see it. We think it's all good. Any thoughts before we move? All right. Colossians 1, Colossians chapter 1, verse 1 through 13. From Shaul, or Paul, by Yahuwah's will, and apostle of the Messiah, Yahushua, and brother Timothy, to Yahuwah's people, 
and Colossians. And the faithful brothers and the Messiah, grace to you and shalom from Yahuwah our Father. Whenever we pray, we always give thanks to Yahuwah, the Father of our Adonai Yahushua, the Messiah. For we have heard of your trust or faith in the Messiah Yahushua and, the, and of the love you have for all Yahuwah's people. Both, both spring from the confident hope that you will receive what is stored up for you in heaven. You heard earlier about the message about the truth. This good news he has made its presence felt among you just as it is also being fruitful and multiplying throughout the world in the same way as it has among you since the day you heard and understood the grace of Yahuwah as it really is. Mm, I think I'm going to skip down some. Okay, verse 9 says, Therefore, the day we heard of it, we have not stopped praying for you, asking Yahuwah to fill you with the knowledge of his will in all the wisdom and understanding which the Spirit gives. This is the goal. We want Yahuwah to fill us, right? with the knowledge of his will and all the wisdom and understanding which the Spirit gives. We need that completely filled with the knowledge of his will so that we can carry out his will so that we can bear fruit. Right? This is, this is what we should pray concerning our lives. Right? We should ask Yahuwah to fill us Fill us with the knowledge of his will and all the wisdom and understanding which the spirit gives. If we have that, it is very difficult to go wrong with bearing good fruit. I'm not saying it's impossible, but if we have that, we are, we confine ourselves to the submitting uh, to the spirit. Which gives us all knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Verse 10, so that you may live lives worthy of Yahuwah and entirely pleasing to him and being fruitful in every good work and multiplying in the full knowledge of Yahuwah. Any thoughts? Right? By now, we should, we should see, I think we've seen enough to understand how important Bearing fruit is, right? And not only bearing fruit, continuing to bear more fruit, even the even more than the time previously before. All right, verse 11 says, we pray that you will be continually stripping with all the power that comes from his glorious might so that you will be able to, per to uh, pers persevere and be patient in any situation joyfully. 12, giving thanks to the Father for having made you fit to share in the inheritance of his people in the light. He has rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son. Hallelujah. Our we almost done. We ain't got much left. You almost done. Um, Matthew 3, 3 through 12 states that this is the man that Yeshua Yahu, which Yeshua Yahu, right, was talking about when he said, The voice of someone crying out in the desert, prepare the way for Yahuwah made straight paths for him. Verse 4 says, John, or Yochanan, wore clothes of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. And his food was locusts and wild honey. John, John was straight up scruffy. What and nothing, <laughs> nothing fancy about John. He was not well manicured. He was not clean shaven up, trimmed up, nothing. John was rough with wild locusts and honey eating. This is what John was. 
camel hair, right? So verse 5 said, people went out to him from Jerusalem and all of Judah from the whole region around Jordan, confessing their sins, and they were immersed by him in the Jordan River, right? But when Yochanan saw the Pershing, Pershum and it's the Pharisees and the um, Sadducees coming to be immersed by him. And he said to them, you snakes who warned you to escape the coming punishment, if you really turn from your sins to Yahuwah, produce fruit that will prove it. See, our fruit, the thing that we produce proves that we have submitted our lives to the will of Yahuwah. It proves it. This is why we must produce it. John said, if you really turn from your sins, if you really repent it to Yahuwah, produce the fruit that proves it. Right? And it says, and don't suppose, verse 9, you can comfort yourselves by saying, Abraham is our father, for I tell you that Yahuwah can raise up for Abraham's sons from these stones. Already the axe is at the root of the tree, of the trees, ready to strike. Every tree that doesn't produce good fruit will be chopped down and thrown in the fire. Like this is this is like a recurring thing. We keep reading it over and over again. It is critical that we produce good fruit. We must produce good fruit. We are going to give an account for the fruit that we produce while our, with our time on this earth. And like I said earlier, the only way we can truly know exactly what we're supposed to be doing, right, is to get in line with the Most High. And if you know, we have to really get busy doing what he called us to do. And understand that he is the one who has given you the power to do it. So there's no reason to fear about it. Right? Verse 11, it's true that I'm immersing you in water so that you might turn from sin to Yahuwah. But the one coming after me is more power, powerful than I. I'm not worthy even to carry his sandals and he will immerse you in the rock HaKadosh and in fire. Verse 12, he has with them a want a winnowing fork, and he will clear out his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn, but burning up the straw with unquenchable fire. That's separating the wheat from the tear. Any thoughts? Any thoughts before we move? All right, you're almost done. Jeremiah 17, 7 through 8. Blessed is the man who trusts Yahuwah. Yahuwah will be, will be his security. He will be like a planted tree. He will be like a tree planted near water. It spreads out its roots by the river. It does not notice when heat comes. And its foliage is luxuriant. It is not anxious in the year of drought, but keeps on yielding fruit. So the circumstances, the issues of life, the things that we go through, no matter what happens, he has equipped us and empowered us to keep on bearing fruit. We can't allow our circumstances or the issues of life to dictate whether we bear a fruit or not. We have to bear good fruit consistently. And he has empowered us to do so. He said he will, he said he will be like the man who has faith in Yahuwah. Yahuwah will be in security. He will be like a tree planted near water. It spreads out its roots by the river. It does not notice when heat comes. And this foliage is luxury. It is not anxious. In the year of drought. Do y'all hear this? It's not anxious. It's not worried. It's not stressed out or overly concerned in the year of drought. 
but it keeps on yielding fruit. That's what we have to do. That's the mindset we have to have. No matter what happens, we are, we are going to continue to do what Yahuwah called us to do effectively. Any thoughts before we move? All right. And we got a couple more. Ephesians 5, 8 through 17, for you used to be darkness, but now united with Yahuwah, you are light. Live like children of light. For the fruit of the light is in every kind of goodness, rightness, and truth. Try to determine what will please Yahuwah. This is what we have to do. We have to determine what will please Yahuwah in order to do so. We have to be in the capacity and have and cultivate the ability to hear his voice so that he we can hear him tell us what decisions or what things we must do or must not do in any circumstance to please him in our decision making, right? Verse 11, have nothing to do with deeds that produce, deeds produced by darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of the things these people do in secret. But, in, but everything exposed to the light is revealed clearly for what it is. Since anything revealed is a light, this is why it says, get up, sleeper, arise from the dead, and the Messiah will shine on you. Therefore, pay careful attention to how you conduct your life. Live wisely, not unwisely. Use your time well, for these are evil days. So don't be foolish, but try to understand what the will of Yahuwah is. That has been said twice there. Try to understand. Do your best to understand what the will of Yahuwah is concerning our lives. I think this is the last one. Galatians 5, 23 through 25. But the fruit of the spirit is joy, is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, and self-control. Nothing in the Torah stands against such things. Moreover, those who belong to the Messiah, Yahushua, have put their old nature to death on the stake, along with its passions and desires. Since it is through the spirit that we have life, let it also be through the spirit that we order our lives day by day. Hallelujah. And that is all I have. Let me stop sharing my screen. Hallelujah. Yep. That's it. Any thoughts, questions, comments? Thoughts, questions, comments? I did have a a, a, a verse. Um, oh, Shalom. Shalom. Um, when you were saying like you know bearing fruit and Yah actually tells us in His Word, like we don't ask your mother, your father, even your pastor, elder, like you know brothers, sisters in Christ, like what you be sh should do, what you right. should be doing, what is his will for you? Like, you have to ask him. And yeah. Isaiah 45, because mm -hmm. some people, we get caught up in this person doing that, and, oh, maybe I should do that. And I feel like it's a school for everything now. You can be a prophetess if you want. You can just be whatever <laughs> you want. If you go to a six-week school and pay $200. But um, right. Isaiah 45, verse... 10 and 11 says, this is the King James Version, woe right. unto him that saith unto his father, what be God is thou? Or to the woman, what hast thou brought forth? Mm -hmm. Thus saith Yah, the Holy One of Yasharel and his maker, ask me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands. Command mm -hmm. ye me. So he wants you to come to him and ask him, what 
what he has for your life. What are you supposed to do? Like what fruit are you supposed to be bearing in your life? Right. But you know, you know what I oh, what I what I've um <clears throat> come to realize and with his um true, and I mentioned it before, some people have asked, right? And but they may not have been persistent, right? And some people don't have or have not cultivated, I'll say. They have not cultivated the capacity to hear him, right? So some people has gotten to a space where it's like, all right, well, I can't hear him for myself. Why bother asking? And because of that, that will cause them to go seek everywhere else except him for themselves because they haven't cultivated the capacity to be able to hear his voice for themselves. And that is extremely important because he said, my sheep know my voice. Not hear it, not just hear it, but know it. Because you can hear a voice, you can hear him and not recognize as him and shrug it off and miss the instruction. But you're right. We have to get to a place of going directly to him. We have to practice how to listen to him in prayer. And we have to develop the capacity to know his voice. All right, Sister B, hop good. And that scripture reminds me, too, of like by not asking him, you could be trying to bring forth oranges, but you're an apple tree. Like, you know what I mean? You're trying to bring forth fruit that is not even what he has called you to do because you didn't ask the source, the one who actually planted the tree, like, you know, who bears you up and keeps you. You right. didn't ask the source. So you trying to bring forth. And that's why people go to those schools, because it's like, who, how can, how does a, a somebody teach you how to be a prophet of Yah mm -hmm. without going to Yah? Like, that doesn't even make sense. So it's like, wait, what? Like, that doesn't make, but you're trying to come up with ideas that you should be when in actuality, if you just ask him. Mm -hmm. But like you said, if you don't really communicate with him, if you don't have a relationship with him, then you wouldn't know whether he was talking to you either way. Mm hmm. Now, in reference, in reference to um, prophetic schools, right? Um, prophetic schools that I know, they don't, they don't teach you how to be a prophet. You are already called to that office or that gifting. What happens is they teach you how to operate in protocol and order. Because I've been through the prophetic school, right? And that is what's taught there how to oper operate in protocol and order and confidence in your gifting. And you get to exercise your gift so that the exercising of the gift makes you more confident and it makes you stronger in it. So some people, some people are in the office of the prophet and you have some people who operate in the gift of prophecy. Either which way, protocol and order has to be taught how to correctly operate in that gift so you don't jack people up. So those schools do have a purpose and that is what the purpose is supposed to be. Yep. Anybody else? But you know what I'm thinking about on that line on that lines um and I'm hearing the scripture that comes to mind have a form of godliness, mm -hmm. but denying the power thereof. And you know how we can um, have these different gifts that Yah has given to us, but if we don't do anything with them, mm -hmm. if we don't go somewhere um, you don't have to go to these schools, but if you don't get under the right individuals right. to help you cultivate yes. your gift, and I agree totally with you that you will make a shipwreck of that gift and you will destroy yes. many people. You have so much blood on your hands. Yep. So that's why it's just like anything else. You have to know what you're doing when you're dealing mm -hmm. in, in different realms. 
just like you know with the the um the sons of Skeva. Right. The 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 demons told them they said, Paul, we know, you know, y'all sure we know, but we don't know who you are. <laughs> so you gotta know what you're doing, you know, and you gotta you gotta you gotta be skillful in, in your gifts. You gotta you gotta cultivate it, you gotta spend time with him. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's not just oh, I got gifts and that's it. That's where we stop. Right. No, you got to spend time with the Almighty, you know, with cultivating that gifts and, and him telling you when to do it, when not to do it, because he said things are lawful, but not expedient. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, I heard him. I heard him. I got to say it right now. You know, I don't I don't like when I'm in, in places where people like, oh, I just got to get it out. I got to get it out. I got to get it out. No, you got to. He said he's in. He's not out of order. Right. You got to do everything in decent is in order. And sometimes, you know, people don't, it's not going to like that. True. People going to talk about it. People going to say, oh, that wasn't him because it mm -hmm. didn't please their flesh. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, we got to be so careful with being fruit that we bear the fruit that's pleasing into the eyes of the Almighty and not the eyes of man. Because, yes. you know, man will put you up there today and he'll take you down, not tomorrow, to the same day, he'll take you same down. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Anybody else? Questions, thoughts, comments? Yes, hallelujah. The, the spirit is subject. Hallelujah. That's true. Really subject to the prophet. Hallelujah. Yep. All right. Well, if nobody else has anything, I hope that something that was said here tonight was edifying, something that was helpful to us, something that we can again um put in practice and practically uh, apply to our lives so that our walk can become more effective with the most high. Um I'm going to pray us out. Next week, we will hop back on to um, one of the biblical, biblical Bible misconceptions teachings. We'll, we'll do that next week. I was supposed to do it tonight, but you had another plan, so that's what it was. Um, all right, so I'm going to pray us out real quick. Y'all, we come to your name, Yahushua, Father, thanking you for this study, Father. We thank you for your word, Father. We ask you to allow us to apply this to our lives, Father. We ask you to allow us to be effective and bearing fruit, Father. We ask you to cultivate us and prune us so that we can bear more fruit that you may get all the glory and honor out of our lives. Let all the blessings of the Shabbat be upon all of us who has decided to keep your covenant. Father, we thank you now. In the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom. Hallelujah. Happy Feast of Dedication. All right, y'all. Shabbat shalom.